All right, today was day one at NAMM. I'm gonna try to keep this video pretty short and sweet. It's 9.30 at night, and I wanna cut and edit this video and get it out to you. Um, but let me just kind of take one step back here and talk about uh, trying to shoot video at NAMM is a bit of a nightmare. And honestly, uh, I kind of knew this going in from last year, but shooting video on the floor at NAMM is incredibly difficult and I have not been able to shoot anything on the floor yet that I honestly think is good enough quality that I want to uh, really bother shooting some of the stuff. Now, uh, a friend of mine, Jeremy, is gonna be doing several videos on the floor demo. He has an even more complicated setup than I do, including like four channel track mixers and things like that and obviously, you're gonna see content from Premier Guitar and whoever else, the big media that's doing that. What I wanna focus on are the things that I go and I visit, I wanna give you my take on them, show you some pictures, and, and that's kinda of what I wanna cover in these recaps that I wanna do from NAMM. So, let's start with what I saw today at NAMM. Started the day at the Equilibrium and Omega Amplifiers booth. No real surprises there in a very good way. So. I already own an Omega Obsidian. I got to check that amp out with a couple of different cabs, including I got to play through the new Eminence Mick Thompson speakers. They sounded really good in that scenario. NAMM is the absolute worst place to uh, test amps or cabinets just because you can't really get them loud enough. And if you can get them loud enough, you're still hearing everything else that's being done around them. But uh, super impressed by the stuff that I saw from Omega, and he is sharing a booth with uh, Dave at Equilibrium Guitars. Um, and the guitars at Equilibrium, uh, both of the ones that I actually played and everything I looked at looked fantastic. Um, I'm still considering buying one myself, and I'll be talking with Dave more about that tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna post some pictures uh, of what's going on and what I saw there as part of what's uh, part of this video, um, you'll probably be seeing them here or here as I cut this, who knows what I'm actually gonna do. Uh, been a long day. So, started my day there and then I kinda wandered over and I shot a video in the isolation booth with Kyle on the G20. Now, I covered that on the day it was released. I broke that in one of my news stories. Um, I wasn't intending really to demo the amp. I hit like three chunk chords. It was meant to be a super fun interview with Kyle talking about how you might use the G20, the differences from the D20 and other things in the Rev lineup. So expect that video coming down the pipe. Now from there, my day got pretty busy. I bounced around a lot of places. Um, and the two things that I really spent time checking out were, uh, excuse me, I got to check out uh, Driftwood amps, uh, the Purple Nightmare, the Darkest Nightmare, and the Mini Nightmare. I had to play all of those, and I really, really enjoyed that amp. It was really focused while still not seeming difficult to play, or a word I like to use when I play certain amps is unforgiving. Um, and it's something I don't have in my lineup, so that's a serious consideration for me on what I might want to take home. Now, then I went over to the Neural DSP booth with the intent to check out the Quad Cortex. However, there was a line about four people deep in order to go check that out. I already have one pre-ordered, so, you know, I'll figure I'll, I'll have a chance later this week to check it out. But there was a laptop booth open and I sat down to check out some of the plugins and I was given a tip by uh, the guys over at Omega that there may have something special hidden on those laptops. And what I found was this. And that is, I was able to find that they are working on an Omega plugin. So the prototype that I was able to find has just what was the Iridium amp, the name of what the new one is escaping me. You'll see it in the screenshot above. Um, had some a great cab simulation. And one of the new features on this plugin um, was you had the ability to change the power tubes down at the bottom, and I thought that was a very cool feature. Um, again, the the purpose is to give you some a lot of options without you know overwhelming you with controls and settings. It's just really helping you to dial in a different tone. And so, uh, using just listening to that and playing through it with headphones, I thought was fantastic. So 
Purple Nightmare was great. Neural DSP booth was great. I got to listen to my friend Jason play the new Evil Pumpkin amp at the Fortin booth. It sounded great. Um, I haven't had a chance to check it out myself yet. I will be doing that. I then walked over and took a quick look around at the Balaguer booth. Uh, Joe has released a couple of Heritage guitars, which are ones he builds himself in the USA. Um, I did, wasn't able, I, you know, totally spaced snapping a picture of the USA one. I promised to get you that for tomorrow, but a very cool USA guitar that's over there. Now, I kind of rounded out my day by spending a little bit of time over in Hall A, just looking at some pro audio stuff. I had an interview with someone over there on some something that I may cover um, once I get back um, around uh, ear monitoring software, which is something I, as a media person, got asked to come and see if I would be you know, willing to do an interview with them. And not something I would use every day, but it could be very cool. Then I had uh, the privilege of being invited to do a walkthrough in the Dean Guitars booth. And I don't want to say too much about it, um, but I was they were super hospitable. Um, again, this channel has you know not very many followers and it was invited by someone from their PR team. But they let me interview one of the VP of product management there and spent about you know an hour with me just talking me through what Dean's doing right now. So I uh, won't say anything more about that just so I can cover it in a later video. But that was pretty much wrapping up day one. Uh, I then went out to dinner with some friends at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. So I come down to LA all the time for work, but this was actually the first time I've hit up a Roscoe's. So that was absolutely a fun thing to do at NAM. The chicken was good, fine. The wa waffles were surprisingly good. So that's kind of how I ended up my evening. And then I rolled out to an Uber and back to this Airbnb that you're seeing. This is where I will be filming from all week and long. So that's my recap of day one. Um, be sure to smash the subscribe button down here. Uh, leave me comments, questions. If there's something you want me to go get pictures of for you at NAM, uh, do that. Also go check out my Facebook page, Gear in Review, or find me on Instagram as well. Um, send me messages. I'm always happy to interact with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I look forward to talking with you very, very soon. Thank you for your time. And like I said, I will see you soon.